Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Lori and today I'm going to be making this Ariel out of a Tonner doll and I'm super excited about it because I had so much fun. I got to be really creative and uh, working with the client. She was like, do what you want. I just want the pink down so something that represents it. I looked at a lot of cosplay. Um, I looked at seashells and things that were reminding me of the ocean because I, I wanted to kind of bring that into her gown. And I also wanted to match her with my Cinderella that I also made for the same client. So I ended up using the same fabric that is the overlay, but in a different color. And clearly I am a huge mermaid lover. So not bringing the ocean and mermaidiness into the gown just didn't make sense to me. So that's what I did. And yeah, I've made a lot of aerials, but these all have tails. So I will see you on the other side. I started out with a Tonner Maxine doll and the client said she wanted her Ariel to look like Emma Stone, but the Maxine doll didn't really look like Emma Stone or have her features. So what I did was I enlarged her eyes, both because Emma Stone has really big eyes anyway, and because I wanted to maintain a little of that animated look. I removed all of the hair. I knew I was going to reroute her, so I decided to do the reroute after. I re-sculpted the eyes with a solution that helps to break down the vinyl, and then I used a scalpel to scrape away the excess vinyl, then smoothed it with various files. Once that was done, I sprayed the head with Mr. Super Clear. The Mr. Super Clear is great for evening out the surface of the doll and giving it a tooth for the pencils and the pan pastels to adhere to. Using a picture of Emma Stone, I take my time using various makeup brushes to sculpt out her features. I spray the doll between each layer with MSC so I can continue to build depth and highlights. Since I am trying to find a balance between human and animated character, I am being a little more liberal with the blush on the cheeks and the highlights under the eyes than maybe I normally would be, while still carving out the cheekbones like a real human. And as you can see, I am using the tray of pan pastels that I pre-mixed. You can find that video where I mixed this palette at the end of this video or in the description below. Right now, I am just laying down the base colors and making sure I blush the ears. This is a lot easier to do when the doll has no hair. I've said this before in previous videos, but if you have never watched one of my videos before, I cannot express enough what a game changer Pan Pastels and Mr. Super Clear are for being able to really shape the features of a doll. And while this doll does not have to look exactly like Emma Stone, I do want to get her pretty close. It's also really important to understand how Pan Pastels and MSC work together. Building layers will require twice as much light to dark. When you spray MSC, it brings the dark out more and fades away the light. So I add extra light and I am more careful with the dark colors. I move on to sketching out the doll with colored pencils and watercolor pencils. I use mainly Prismacolor and Arteza and I can use an eraser if I make a mistake. This helps me get the features right before I use paint, which is a lot harder to remove. When I first started repainting dolls, I sketched them out using a number two pencil. I don't recommend that because the lead will bleed into the paint and make it messy. Colored pencils don't really do that. However, I didn't have Mr. Super Clear back in those days, so I'm not sure if that plays a part in keeping the pencil from bleeding. I still wouldn't do it though. One of the problems of repainting is definitely seeing the details, and this is where I've been having issues. I use several types of seeing devices, but as the years have gone by, I've really strained my eyes and I need more powerful tools. I recently purchased a new magnifying glass and recording videos has become a new challenge. I will figure it out eventually, but the magnifying glass is pretty amazing. 
I have been working on this doll for quite some time. I admit to falling into this weird space during the pandemic. It's true and I'm only human and some days I just don't want to work on my work. However, this is a mermaid and I've had a long time love affair with mermaids. It actually started with horses. I would draw horses on a daily basis. I begged my mother for those drawing books, you know, the ones that teach you how to draw. Every single one was a horse. I coveted those little horse figures. I wanted all of them. I didn't really have them all, but I wanted them. Horses were my jam. And then I saw Hans Christian Andersen's The Little Mermaid. It was a little cartoon that looks a lot like anime. I guess back then I didn't know what that was, but I was lost forever. The mermaid had won my heart. I don't remember how old I was when it happened, but I've been lost ever since. For the paint, I like golden matte fluid acrylics the best, but my very close second is the new Liquitex acrylic wash, probably because it is new. The brush I am using is a Princeton that I found at Hobby Lobby, but they only have 18 slash zero, and I much prefer a 20 slash zero. The brand is nice though, and you can find the 20 slash zero on Amazon. I'm pretty sure you can tell my video voiceover is a bit different today. I'm trying something new, trying to make sure I get everything across clearly so that it doesn't sound like I'm rambling on and on. While I'm learning how to make better videos, getting more equipment and stuff like that, I have been uploading some real time videos to my Patreon page. I will link that page below if you're interested in diving a little deeper in how I repaint. On my Patreon page, I also plan on covering sculpting, mermaid paintings, and whatever else that I happen to be working on that I can record. I sometimes don't think about the information and knowledge that I have accumulated over the last 20 years that I could be passing on to you. I would also love to hear from you. What would you like to see? I know I have been asked to show Barbie repaints and I really am working on it. Referring back to my vision problems earlier, I have been having a really hard time seeing and I have my new amazing magnifying glass, but I've been unable to paint a Barbie while recording it. However, I am looking into a stronger lens from Linge <laughs> for my Donovan Optivisors. I would love to hear from you what else you would like to see. There's just so many aspects to doll creating and even anything else that you might like to see. So please don't hesitate to comment below and also like this video. It really helps my channel and hit the subscribe button. Thank you. Also below in the description box, I will have all the links to everything I used. And if it's not there, don't hesitate to ask me about it. I noticed that some of my video links no longer work. I don't know why, but I'm going through them to relink them all up to their items. Also, referring back to the Barbie repaints, just know that repainting can be done like what I am demonstrating on most any doll. For the reroute, I sent pictures of hair color choices to my client and she chose the one she liked best. I ordered the hair from Restore Doll. To reroute the hair, I heat up the head in a heating pad. I have to leave the head in there for a while to get it nice and soft. Toner heads are really hard. I use a rooting tool and I keep the hair wet throughout the reroute to control it. I also wanted to add quickly that when I am rerouting a Barbie that the method is pretty much the same, but I don't use a heating pad because a Barbie's head is nice and soft, so you don't need one. Next I'm adding some freckles lightly with a Prince Macolor pencil in Sienna Brown, and I covered the hair to seal her face one last time. I started using the same pencil to do the hairline, but I was not getting it dark enough, so I switched to paint. I mixed Scarlet and Mars Black in Liquitex acrylic gouache and painted in the hairline with the same brush I used earlier. Oh, and the music that's playing right now is called Mermaid. It sounded cool and eerie. Anyway, after I finished the hairline, I washed the hair with a regular shampoo and conditioner. Sometimes I just use Dawn 
dishwashing liquid because sometimes the hair can be kind of greasy and limp and you don't want to add conditioner to it at all. Sometimes you don't have to and sometimes you do. You just sort of, you got to have to know. And then I set it with some large drinking straws that I cut up and held them in place with bobby pins. I use boiling water and avoid pouring it directly on the repaint. I then allow the hair to dry and tease it a lot and use hairspray between the teasing pieces to hold the set better. I shape the hair into its style. I tried to record it, but I missed the entire top of the head while I was doing it. I'm really sorry. That's my bad. So here it is. I used tiny rubber bands and straight pins to secure the style in place. So now we're getting to the gown. I'm not a real seamstress, so my approach is artistic. I wrap the doll body up in saran wrap and use masking tape to make my pattern. This works great for a corset. I saw this done in a cosplay video and it really works. Once I have the masking tape on, I only need one arm and one half of the pattern because I will be using it to mirror the other side. So it's like one side and then double it. So I draw the pattern and then carefully cut it off the doll so I don't scratch the body. I like to use little embroidery scissors for that. I take my time and mark each piece so when I cut it on the fabric, I can put it back together the right way. I mark F1 for front panel, F2 for front panel 2, and so forth. I also use arrows to show where they go because I get really confused. Sewing has always been a challenge for me. If you saw my video for the stills character, I managed to follow a real pattern for a man's flannel shirt, which I was very proud of, by the way. Of course, I had help from my friend Ison and some of the other artists on the Repaint Society. If you haven't followed my videos, I will link some of those Repaint Society videos below in the comment section. The Repaint Society is a group of artists, we mainly work on Tonner, that grew out of my desire to create more character dolls from a single show or movie than I could possibly do on my own. So we band together and created a group. We have done eight shows together so far. The Walking Dead, that was our first show, Game of Thrones, Once Upon a Time, Star Wars, we titled Doll Wars, Fairy Tales Reimagined, we titled Fairy Tale Redux, Famous Brides, we called June Brides, a winter theme we called Baby It's Cold Outside, and a strong female theme we called Women on Fire. And we have a new show coming this fall that has yet to be announced. Please head over to the Facebook, The Repaint Society Group, and join us. You will find our past show pictures under albums, and they're really worth checking out. I have some really fun projects coming up. Some of the dolls that I'm working on in the Tonner size are Eric for Ariel, the Winter Soldier, two Padmes, a doll that will be very artistic with the third eye, Taryn Egerton as Elton John, Delta Burke as Suzanne in Designing Women, Giselle from Enchanted, and in Barbie size, another Kim Basinger and the Supremes. I just finished up Elena Gilbert but could not film her. I promise I tried. I just couldn't do it. I will create a small little slideshow video of her and I'll just upload that separately. Oh, and Paul bought me the new Wonder Woman dolls from Wonder Woman 84. Those will be created for video and will be for sale. I'm really excited to work on those. I have a huge love for Wonder Woman. I have several for myself, so after I am done with these, I think they're going to be hard to part with. I love Marvel and everything about it, but I was raised on DC, so I have a special place in my heart for all of the characters. I'm really excited for the Snyder Cut release of Justice League on HBO Max. I was totally one of the nerds posting, release the Snyder Cut. If you don't know what I'm talking about or what that means, I'm so sorry. Quickly. Zack Snyder left the Justice League movie because of a family tragedy. He was replaced with Joss Whedon, who refilmed much of Justice League, and it was basically ruined and really confusing. This was what WB wanted, I guess. But under the pressure of so many fans, me included, my husband as well, <laughs> probably some of our friends, they're releasing a four-hour-long version of Zack Snyder's movie on HBO Max. It could be cut into parts, they say. I don't know. 
They haven't said yet, but it's going to be on sometime next year. So I'm really excited. Okay, so now that I have my pattern cut out, I can transfer it to my fabric. The fabric I am using is a polyester satin in a pretty pink that I picked up at Hobby Lobby. I place my pattern down on the fabric, which is doubled over, and secure it in place with straight pins. I use an invisible ink pen to draw the pattern onto the fabric. It vanishes with water, but I notice it disappears a little too quickly for me because I guess I'm slow. However, I will sew right on the lines I drew in for myself so it is a perfect fit. I'm not too worried about the part of the fabric being wrinkled because the pieces are so small. I cut out the pieces giving myself plenty of allowance. And then I flip the piece over and put the pattern on the other side, upside down, and trace it. So I have two of every piece of each side of the corset. Then I base together all of the pieces of each side of the corset before I sew it together on the machine. I want to say that if painting dolls or sewing intimidates you, it did me too, especially sewing. Dolls I sort of jumped into, like I knew what I was doing, but that was probably because I was already painting mermaids. With sewing, I just have to take my time and be willing to make mistakes. I do get frustrated, but I really try not to rush anything. And I definitely walk away if things are not working out. I'm not very knowledgeable when it comes to fabrics. I just choose fabrics that are lightweight or I ask friends. <laughs> that really is the thing to do is ask, just ask questions. And I was kind of shy about asking questions. So I would just sort of like go into it, not knowing. For a doll, you want to avoid anything bulky. I will say that. I once made a gown for Dolores on Westworld. I hunted forever for that perfect fabric. I never found it, but I did find a man's work shirt at a garage sale. It was worn and really thin, and it was just perfect for her. It wasn't exactly the perfect fabric, but it looked right and to scale. So it made it easy for me to fit it to the body and make it look good. I think finding patterns and pieces that are scale are really crucial to getting the desired effect. I wanted to go back quickly and mention that I said I have not recorded a Barbie repaint. I actually did record about a half of a repaint for Kim Basinger on a Mackie Barbie and that video is available in real time on my Patreon page. While I am working away here, I also wanted to say that I do plan on making some custom Monster High dolls. I absolutely love Monster High and have been planning a Madame Leota since last Halloween. If you don't know who Madame Leota is, she is the fortune teller that's in the globe at the Haunted Mansion at Disney. And Halloween is my favorite holiday. I have gathered all of the pieces and just need to make the time. I've been spending most of my time working on filling commissions. I'm a little backlogged, and so I try not to do side projects until I get more caught up on fulfilling my promises. I think it's important to mix your creative work and your commissioned work, so I do still paint mermaids and portraits for a break from dolls on the weekends or after work. With the pandemic and no sports, I have been watching more TV in the evening with my husband. But baseball is back, even if it is just practice. So I'm coming in my studio more often and I can fit extracurricular work in. I really do schedule out my days just like work days. And with Paul working from home now, the scheduling is just easier. Okay, once I get all of these little pieces cut up and sewn together, I will cut away the extra fabric and close the edges with a zigzag stitch. Then I will repeat the entire piece with a thin liner fabric. Once I have created those two pieces, I sew them together, good size together, and flip them over so that the pretty sides are on the outsides. Does that make sense? <laughs> Normally, I, I'll just flip them over so that, you know, it's pretty on both sides. Normally, I like to do the embroidery work before I sew the lining on, but for Ariel, I knew I was going to do beading and I was just tentative about putting the beading through the machine. So I went ahead and lined it before I did the beading and embroidery. And all of my threads are light colors, so I had no worries about staining the doll. But I do recommend when you are basing the pieces together that you use a different color 
thread so that it's easier to remove after you sew it together on the machine. And may I also add that you do not have to have a machine at all to do this. Just some patience. Another thing to note is to buy plenty of fabric because you can count on having to redo things. Plenty of fabric and plenty of thread. When you are in the middle of a project, you don't want to have to stop and run to the store. Totally breaks the flow. I made most of this gown pre-pandemic. I finished it off just a few days ago. And if you have made it this far into the video, you will see a finished version of it at the end. If you have made it this far, thank you so much. I hope it is super helpful to you and I truly, truly appreciate it. I try the bodice on multiple times to check the fit. Tonner and Barbie both have dress forms. I have one for Tonner, but it doesn't match the body type I am using, so I have to work with what I have. I do love to work on a dress form though, whenever possible. You can pin the pieces right to the form to get a perfect fit and doll bodies are plastic and slippery. You can see here where I made the liner and have basted the two pieces together. I will flip those and check the fit. Then I know I can sew them together in the machine because it's a lot easier to change it before you sew it on the machine. After I finished mostly with the bodice for now, I started on the sleeves. I decided to do an overlay of the beautiful iridescent creakle organza I bought that look like seashells. This is the exact same fabric I used for the overlay of Cinderella's gown, but it's in a different color and it's hard to work with. For Cinderella, I wanted to get that iridescent feel that you get from the movie, that magic. And the crinkle organza worked, but it tears easily, so be mindful of that if you decide to use it. For Ariel, the crinkle organza was going under her main skirt and would show through a front panel as well as on her sleeves. So I overlaid the two pieces together and I sewed them down to keep the organza in place. That's because it's slippery. Then I was able to spend some time being creative with the embroidery, beading, and sequins. Lucky for me, I have stashed away micro beads and sequins and embroidery thread. So I decided I had everything I needed. <laughs> I didn't really have a plan as to how I wanted the embellishing to look. I just made it up as I went along, allowing the creative flow. I knew the colors, pinks, blues, and pearls, seashell colors. I wanted it to reflect where she came from, that she is a mermaid and the ocean is in her heart. I wanted to honor the original version that the artist had of her gown and bring it to real life. When I created Cinderella, I was just copying the gorgeous gown as it was and the challenges that comes with it and I love doing it for both Ariel and Cinderella I will only be doing this once because I really feel that they're both oak dolls and need to not be repeated not that I haven't recreated dolls before I just would rather have these two be oaks so right here I am beating little micro pearls around the hem of the sleeve and then pushing the needle back through all of the pearls to straighten them out so they look nice and uniform. I had already made the other sleeve, so I just used that one as my guideline for the second one, following the pattern I created for myself with the pearls and sequins. I originally purchased the tiny sequins for another project a long time ago that just never happened. So it was nice to pull them out and use them for this. I didn't show the parts where I created the puff sleeves. All I did was cut the pink fabric out to size, then cut strips of the crinkle organza and sew it down on top of the pink fabric. I gathered both ends and then attached them to the sleeves. Embellishing is my favorite part when creating something like this. I have to have a lot of patience creating the piece so I can get to the fun part of beading. For a once upon a time gown for Emma Swan that I collaborated with another Repaint Society artist with, I spent an entire car ride to Savannah from Florida beating the neckline for the red dress. Okay, back to the bodice. All of the markings will disappear with the invisible ink and the black thread will be removed. The next thing I did was close the bottom seam of the bodice. I sewed it down and flipped it right side out. And I always clean up all of my seams with a zigzag stitch. This way everything is nice and neat and there won't be any fraying fabric ends. Now it's time for more embellishing. 
I trimmed the top of the bodice with pearl beads and did the same method I did on the sleeves. I ran the needle back through the pearls to make them more uniform and neat. This takes a little patience, but it's so worth it to see the pearls all aligned perfectly. Next, I took an invisible pin and drew out the little pattern onto the bodice front. The idea behind the pattern is swirling seashell shapes done in the various colors of micro glass beads. The invisible pin really spreads on the satin, so it's kind of hard to follow, but I did my best. Once I had the skirt on the doll with all of her layers, I could not get that crinkle organza to lay down properly. So I went to my team of doll friends and asked them for ideas. It was suggested that I use ribbon wire at the bottom of the fabric, and then I could shape it any way I wanted. I believe it was Monica's idea. I sewed the wire in and it worked perfectly. So thank you, Monica. For the skirt, I laid out all of the fabric together and cut them in a big circle. The layers include satin, crinkle organza, several layers of tulle, and pink chiffon. It was a basic ball gown circle with a small hole for the waist in the middle. I used a large ruler to measure it all out so I knew it would be correct. I overcut the length to give me plenty of room to work with. I completed the beading on the bodice so it was time to attach the closures, which seems to be something I just don't enjoy because I put it off forever. I don't even know why. It's really easy to do. I use the invisible pin to mark each spot so I can get a perfect match and then sew the snaps on, making sure I sew it twice to ensure they stay nice and tight. After I get the first snaps in, I try it on the body to make sure that it is a right fit, and it worked. I didn't create a lot of the skirt on camera. It was huge to cut out, but I was thinking about how I wanted it to look. I didn't want to just have the swags on the sides. I wanted something original just for this doll. So I remember the bridal gowns from the 80s. They had this cloud look to them. I started to do that and decided it was the way to go. I ended up taking it out and redoing it several times though. Sometimes hand sewing can be very relaxing. I've made a few cloth dolls in the past and I'm really thinking about making some new ones. I literally sewed an entire doll by hand in cloth before I had a machine. I'm forever always having new ideas and I have a notebook that I keep them all in. I just can't keep up with all my ideas. Once I get all the snaps done, I go back and cover the thread with sequins and beading just to make it look pretty and polished. I don't really follow a pattern here. I'm making it more of a cluster of just beautiful beads, pearls, and sequins. The next part I have to do is to finish the silver embroidery on the other side of the bodice that for some reason I didn't do before. So I take out my magic pen and draw the pattern in again so I can kind of see where I need to sew it in. The silver thread is very hard to work with. It tangles really easily. So if you use a metallic thread, make sure to use small amounts at a time. Also, my sewing machine hates it. And I have another project coming up where I'm going to have to use it in my sh machine, so wish me luck. The embroidery really adds to the sparkle of the dress and also helps the fabric lay down nice. I am really excited to show off Eric. The beautiful costume was made by Morgan May of Stardust Dolls and it's just gorgeous. I can't wait to reveal him. I will be using a Gale doll to create Eric and the handsome Matt Bomber is my inspiration. His video will be following shortly, so look for that. I will also be including some of his real-time painting on my Patreon page. Finally, I come to the hem of the dress. I have already closed all of the seams with a zigzag stitch, and now I am just finishing up the cloud effect and also adding the last of the beads. And finally, I attach the bodice to the skirt. I did this by hand sewing it because all of the fabric was just too thick to deal with my machine. It made more sense to hand stitch it all into place. I added one more snap closure on the skirt. Yay, it's finally time to reveal Ariel. I hope this video was super helpful to you. Please like and subscribe and hit that little bell if you want to be notified when I have new videos. Eric will be next. 
All of the supplies and links to other videos are in the description below. Thanks for watching all the way to the end, if you made it to the end. And if you want to join my Patreon family, I will also have that link below. Thank you so much. Bye.